So this is it, you've been waiting for it, and Lens for Hobbyist is here. As of July 23rd of 2019, hobbyist or recreational drone pilots can now submit Lance request to fly in controlled airspace. If you remember from previous videos, we talked about the requirement now that hobbyists or recreational pilots have to submit requests in order to fly in controlled airspace. Until now, this was not possible. Now the FAA has opened up the portal to hobbyists so they can actually go and fly in controlled airspace. So in this video, I'm gonna answer three questions. The first off is how do you find what controlled airspace is? The second question is how do you find if Lance is actually available, where you're gonna fly? And the last thing is I'm gonna show you how to submit Lance request. Now you've got two methods of doing this. I'm gonna show you the method where I'm using a, a computer, an actual desktop, a laptop, in order to uh, do the first two steps. And I'm gonna use the iPad or any mobile device in order to submit your Lance request. So let's dive in, let's talk about Lance first and what it actually is. So Lance is this ecosystem that the FAA developed with a bunch of Lance providers in order to provide approval in real time to fly in controlled airspace. This was designed for remote pilots under part 107, and it's now been extended to uh, everyone, basically, hobbyist and remote pilots that want to fly in controlled airspace. So the first thing that I want to show you is a list actually on the FAA websites of all the different Lance airports that are available throughout the country. And there's over 600 of them now which is great news. So uh, here's the list, you can see me scrolling right here, but um, you can actually find, you can do control find or command find depending on what you're using. Uh, I live in Prescott, so I'm gonna type Prescott and you can see here PRC, KPRC, that's the airport that I fly at most of the time. You can see that it is available in Lens. Now, if your airport is not available in Lens, I'm gonna talk about this in a minute and then I'll show you what you'll have to do in order to get in there. But that's kind of the first step. If you wanna see if you live close to an airport, if you fly a lot in that airspace, if you wanna see if you're gonna be be able to fly now with Lance, this is the place to do it. This is where you'll find information. Okay, so the next question is, how do we find what controlled airspace is? Now, uh, you can go and, and go into the sectional chart and find out in the sectional chart what goes on and, and find the airspace there, but there's a better method actually. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go to this map right here called the UAS facility map. And you can find it by just typing in Google US facility map, or you can actually just uh, go and click on the link down in the comment section right here. And uh, what you'll see here is you'll see this is the map of the US and you can see a whole bunch of different uh, colors in here. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm actually gonna go in here. Now it's a little bit slow uh, from time to time because there's a lot of data in here. So I'm gonna type Prescott because this is where I live again, like I said. And I'm just gonna go right here so here you can see in Prescott, we have a grid. And this is where it's important that you consult this website before you go fly. You can do it on apps. You can do it on the app that I'm gonna to use to do the, uh, the lens request. It was easier for me to show you right here uh, using the facility map. That way I can show you two different methods. Um, I like to go on the website first and do my, my planning and then go on the app afterwards to get approval. Um, it, it all depends on your flow, but here it is. Here's the map and you can see there's a bunch of numbers. Zero, 100, 250, 400. These are the maximum altitudes at which you can fly in each of these grids, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in. I like to fly around Watson Lake right here all the time. So Watson Lake, this is the lake right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. And as I'm zooming in, you can see the page loading up. And then now here's Watson Lake Park right here. And you'll be able to see in a second, it's gonna load up to show me that it's available in 400, up to 400 feet which is great, this is gonna be the highest level that it's gonna be available. 400 right here, 400, and then as we go further, 250, and then here's a zero. A zero grid means you can't fly. And guess what, as a hobbyist, you cannot fly above this number right here. There's no way in here, uh, as a hobbyist, that you can request to fly above these altitudes. So your approval is gonna be instantaneous. If you wanna request to fly above these altitudes in here, you have to be a remote pilot, and that takes a few days to get approved, and it's not even guaranteed. So here, this gives you good information. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna to fly at Watson Lake. I know I can fly up to 400 feet, perfect. Now you can see in here, one thing I didn't mention is that this grid is green. You can see the grid and it's green. Green means, green means go, right? Green means go for Lance. There is Lance available right in here. Now I'm gonna type in here, I'm gonna type Phoenix because I wanna show you what happens when we don't have Lance available in some areas. So as I'm typing Phoenix right here, you can see there's a bunch of different airports, okay? And you can see some of them are gonna be red and some of them are gonna be green. Red means 
There is no lens available. If you live close to one of these, even though there is a grid, then you're gonna to have to go through a different process in order to do this, okay? So green right here, Phoenix uh, Airport itself, that's a class Bravo airspace, very busy. But you can see in here that um, we have approval. You can get approval 100, 100, 400. So you can still fly in that airspace as long as you remain within uh, below these numbers that are in here. And as long as you get approval through a lens provider, okay? Now, let's go back to the red grids. The red grids are not available. If you wanna fly in the red grids, now to get approval to fly in there, you're gonna to have to go through the drone zone, the FA drone zone, that is the official website. That's where you registered your drone. That's where you will now be able to submit requests as a hobbyist to fly in controlled airspace that is not covered under lens. So red means FA drone zone, green means lens, instantaneous approval. Now here's a caveat. As I'm recording this, which is today, the first day actually of the approval, July 23rd, this is not available. This being FA drone zone for hobbyist is not available just yet for you to submit requests. So I will have an update when that happens. I will let you know in, the, uh, in my UAS new weekly news update. But for right now, if you live close to a Lance airport, then you can go ahead and submit those requests. So now let's go ahead and show, show you how you're gonna do this, okay? Now we found out what airports are gonna be uh, available in Lance, and then we found the list and we found how to find them on the map. So now let me show you on the iPad how we're gonna do this. We're gonna be using an app called Kitty Hawk. And uh, Kitty Hawk is only one of the few uh, Lance provider in the US. Kitty Hawk is one of them. You have Skyward, which is available only on the computer. You have UA Sidekick. Those are the three that I would recommend you take a look at. Now, before you do this, make sure that you have the most recent version, especially if you're doing this close to uh, July 23rd of 2019. Make sure you have the latest. It's been updated last night, and that contains the, the way to submit request as a hobbyist. So once you log in, what happens is you will see the grid. Now you can see I live uh, outside of the class Delta airspace uh, of the airport. And um, what, what you need to do is you need to look at this grid. And this is the same grid that we saw on the facility map. I wanted to show you on the official website first, and now you can see it on here on the app as well. So you can see this is the lake that I was showing you in the video, and uh, you can see Watson Lake, and you can see that we're in the green area. now. Um, we can do pre-flight in here. We can see uh, if where we're going to fly is going to be uh, is going to be legal or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add and then Add Request Lens Authorization right here. Okay. And when we do this, then we're going to go and grab right here, and uh, I'm going to hold my finger where I want to fly right here. Push a pin. And then once the pin is in there, then what we can see is information about this airport. So I'm gonna go right here, uh, push that type up, and it says US facility map, pers permissible flight altitude, a uh, permissible altitude for authorization, 400 feet. So it means that here I can fly up to 400 feet. I can push a pin a little further up right here, and I'm gonna tap again. There we go. Now I go in here, and it says 100 feet. Okay, in this area I can only do 100 feet. So I'm gonna go back, actually I'm gonna do it in the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it right here, in the 400 feet. And then from here, I can again have that tab open, and then I'm gonna say, uh, get authorization. Get authorization right here. And now you have this little thing that comes up. What type of lens do you want to request? Part 107 as a commercial pilot, or section 44809 as a recreational pilot. So we're gonna do that as a recreational pilot. Now here you have your little grid where you decide to fly. I wanna fly over the lake, so I'm gonna grab this corner, hold my finger, and then do my little map. Again, tap on the corner, hold it, and then move the corners where you wanna fly. And that's a pretty good area right here. That's gonna be representative. From here, here it says, how high do you need to fly? And I'm gonna say, I wanna to fly to 400 feet, actually. I'm gonna push, push it to the max. Next, and then it says, lens authorization are currently not available. If you wanna do it 30 minutes in advance, blah, 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 or 30, 90 days in advance. Uh, but here it says, what's your date? What's the duration of the flight? I'm just gonna do it for now and for 30 minutes. Click next. And from here, it says eligible for auto approval, which means that when I'm done with this in a few minutes, that's it. Then I have approval and I can go and fly immediately. So it says next, I'm gonna say next. And here it's asking you a whole bunch of information. Your name is gonna be at the top with your phone number. And then it's gonna ask you here, terms of operation. You will follow all the rules. Yes, you are responsible for checking the TFRs, temporary flight restriction. There's a link you can click. Check all the notams. And then you're responsible for uh, making sure that you comply with all the special use airspace. 
altitude limits, you know that, no more than 400 feet AGL. And then this authorization does not constitute a waiver of any state or local laws. This is important. There can be still restrictions in your area for you to not take off or land from state or local land. So you have to be careful with this. Each authorization corresponds to a single operator. This is me in this case. And then uh, do not contact ATC. Do not contact ATC, okay? Agree and submit. And then we're gonna wait a few minutes. It's gonna send the information in here into the system. And then in a few seconds, I should be getting a text message from the FAA telling me that I'm approved to fly. And sure enough, here it is. It really has been seriously less than a minute. And I have a text message right here that's telling me uh, from the FAA, it's a long text message, uh, basically telling me that I'm approved to fly in this area. It also says that I have to be available by phone with my phone number listed in here, and I have to follow all the regulation. So here I am, I'm good to fly. I'm good to go and do that flight right now uh, in that airspace. This is it, you just submitted a lens request. Now, one thing I want you to mention, uh, to notice, is that this approval is up to 400 feet AGL, and that's it. There is no going higher than any man-made obstacle in there. So if there is a tower, some people you may have heard, you're allowed to fly 400 feet above the highest uh, man-made obstacle uh, in there. That is not applicable in here in controlled airspace. This only applies outside of controlled airspace. So do not do this as a hobbyist or even as a, as a remote pilot, as a matter of fact, okay? So this is it, you're done. You've submitted your lens request. Hopefully you like this um, information. If you did, please give me a like and, um, and subscribe to the channel. There is way more information coming up. And uh, also I have my weekly US news update. So uh, if you subscribe, then you'll get all these notifications. This is it. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on Friday for a news update.